Hey everyone, before we get into the video I wanted to clear up something from the last video. In my last video I put in the caretaker call where an alleged former caregiver of Daniel spoke out against him. I know a lot of you were questioning if this call was real or not and the answer is no, it's not real. I mistakenly forgot to put the disclaimer about the video being 98% fake, so I'm sorry to any of those who I may have confused by not putting the disclaimer in. And if you haven't seen the other parts, I'll leave a link to those now, and they will also be at the end of the video. Today we're starting the video picking back up on July 27th, a day after Daniel broke the gas station window. So sit back, relax, and I hope you enjoy. On July 27th, Daniel posted a 13 minute long video of him and Bob Proctor arguing which was an intense argument that covered a various amount of past topics, including their own personal relationship. You seem, you just seem very, very, very controlling. Very controlling. As if you are like my guardian all of a sudden. You're telling me that Grace should already be here in Colorado. I don't want to have anything to do with Grace. I keep but you, but I don't know who did it. Yes, you do. No, I don't. Sagittarius, sir. Because he had her phone, like he's had it every time. It's Jacob Sertorius. Big d also, man. Okay, you just pissed me off. And, around and, and you say, well, you caused the problem with Grace. You probably caused the problem with the label. I, I'm busy. I'm busy trying to sort other things out, like my homeless life. I also had to deal with Grace being upset. And, of course, now Jacob Sartorius and her issue with him. You're like, Grace should have been here in Denver already. No. Y yes, you said, I, hold on, hold no, on. you hold on, because you're changing my words. I said, how many times has she promised to be here? And she's never Exactly. That's not that I'm saying she should have been here. Well, she that, said, that, that kind of is. If she said she was going to be all the time, she said she exactly. was Exactly. She should be she here. Should have been. Exactly. And I'm sorry we keep busting our money out on motel rooms as well. I also know that if I get back into disability housing or resources, they won't want me on social media. The very next day, Daniel again admits to P3DO and his TikTok gets banned. Meanwhile, the same day in a live stream that featured Jacob Sartorius, a question came up about Daniel. You can ask, I don't care. Uh, Daniel Larson? Um, I think that's like a TikToker pretty much, but I uh, think it's somebody that like calls me out in all their videos or something. Oh, uh, yeah. So I do know them. Yeah, I do know them. It's all right. He's just a fan. Yeah, <laughs> He's a fan. It's fine. What can we do? <laughs> he has something against me. A couple of days later, on August 6th, multiple events would transpire. The first was a video Daniel would upload talking about how he would be arrested if Grace Vanderwall didn't show up to court. That same day, a 28-minute video was uploaded of a mall security guard continuously asking Daniel to leave, probably because he is known to sleep in public areas. This event ended with Daniel getting banned from the Colorado Mills around a three square mile radius. Daniel would then go on to upload a video claiming that the security guard was a troll, and that's why he got banned from the mall, once again calling for a boycott. Okay, so don't ever go to the Colorado Mills shopping mall. One of the security guards is a troll um, and a hater from my social media platforms and has decided to troll and permanently lifetime ban me from the entire Colorado Mills property land. Daniel would shortly call for another boycott after getting banned from a smash burger. Okay, everyone, so we have a serious issue. Businesses are now doing hate crimes on me. I have been banned today, like permanently lifetime banned from the fast food restaurant Smash Burger. 
Things would start getting significantly worse starting on August 16th as the day started with Daniel's Cameo account getting banned. Daniel obviously blames his manager Warren along with the trolls. Then for some reason Daniel thought it was a good idea to post a picture of a flight he booked to New York City with the confirmation number and his phone number on it. Which this clearly made his flight get cancelled and caused Daniel to get even more angry. Now on August 22nd, Daniel then goes on live video and starts threatening his audience by saying that he will be hiding bombs in the park and blowing up the park. Like I said, I've hidden bombs at this park. You will blow up. Daniel's mental state would completely spiral out of control as Daniel would post on his community page that he was going to bomb Bob Proctor's house if he didn't receive millions of dollars, then shortly posting that he was going to self-harm himself. This would continue to get worse when Daniel started to receive mysterious threats from a random number claiming he was going to shut down his cash app. All of this would build up into a meltdown on August 26th where Daniel would apparently avoid getting hit by some type of vehicle, causing him to go into a complete meltdown where he uses racial slurs multiple times. For some reason after this incident, Daniel would post this on his community page. Daniel would then be spotted at Union Station as he uploads a video on how a person named Tyrone was out of prison and was trying to kill Grace Vanderwall. Obviously this person is not real. The next day, Daniel would post a two minute video of hitting himself in the face repeatedly while saying the n-word multiple times before swiftly deleting it. All of these events would eventually lead up to a major meltdown known as the August 29th Meltdown. On August 29th, 2023, Daniel Larson had a complete meltdown on his YouTube community page before recording the most violent meltdown he's ever had where he's seen hitting his head against a wall and repeatedly hitting himself in the face. This was caused by a fake Grace Vanderwall making threats, fueling his already existing anger this is one of the most violent and mentally debilitating meltdowns and incidents of Daniel's in 2023. Most of it occurred on the community tab, but Daniel went live and it showed just how bad of a condition he was in at the time. After hitting himself repeatedly, Daniel then posts a video of him calling Grace a slur and once again threatening to bomb the White House. This message is to Grace. Grace is a fing and a hater, and I will always hate her now because of what she did. And yes, I will bomb the White House. I will fuck bomb the White House. I will bomb every single police station in the entire U.S. And Grace told me to make this video. Train to Union Station departing in one minute. Daniel on his community tab once again continues with his threats. He threatens to unalive Beyonce, commit unaliving and more threats to bomb places including the White House again. Daniel continuously used racial slurs to his manager Warren and consistently tried to dox Grace Vanderwall. 
Another anonymous number texted Daniel that Tyrone, the made-up person who got out of jail, was going to do something to Daniel until he wasn't alive anymore. He for some reason says that Russia dropped bombs on Grace's house, and he threatens to unalive Grace and tries to contact Tina Vanderwall. The situation gets even worse on August 31st, when Daniel and Bob Proctor would again have an altercation this time getting physical. They argue about Daniel using his phone, which ends up resulting in Bob Proctor trying to forcefully remove Daniel from his car, which Daniel claims that Bob ran him over. So I wasn't going to film, but since you have a problem with me bringing my phone in the car, okay, now I'm going to film because that's my legal right, okay? So you're causing this issue to yourself. You are literally causing this issue to yourself. And I guess I will go without dinner now because you have a problem with me even bringing my phone with me, which is my legal right. You are crazy. You are never helpful anymore. All you do is cause issues. You told me not to be on the phone in the car. I wasn't. I said turn off your phone and put it in the console and you said yes. I'm not going to put it in the console but I will be more than happy to stay off my phone and turn it off. You had a problem with me like literally having it on my seat. The phone was literally turned off. Okay? I just turned it on to film this because you had a problem with that. I'm now filming for my protection. This is ridiculous. You are so stubborn, like I was saying before. So, are we going to get dinner, or are you taking me back to the motel and I'm just going to not have anything for dinner? And I'm not going to eat today at all. And I guess I'll starve tonight. So what is it? Get out! I'm not going to do it. Because I had my phone... Get the f*** out of my car! Okay, don't f grab me. You want me to break your f***ing arm? If you break my arm... Then get the f*** out of my car! Okay, then... Let go of me, fucker! If you fucking hit me, Nick. Holy f where did my phone go? Where did my fucking phone go? Oh, you are hitting me! You're hitting me! God! You hit me first, bitch! Out of my car! You hit me first! I'm not playing these games with you! Holy fucking hell, bitch! Don't grab me like that! Don't fucking grab me! What are you hit me! No! You hit me! You hit me repeatedly! Don't then let go of get me! Get out of my car! Me. You hit me, so Get I have a right my to car. defend myself! Get out Run. of my car! Get out of my car! Now where's my phone? Get open the door and you'll find it! Get out of my car! No! Oh. God damn you! I'm gonna call the cops now. No, because you hit me! Get the hell out you, of my car! You hit me! Now where did it go? What? Get her, find it. Where did it go? Where did the fuck did it go? Where the fuck did it go? <laughs> Get away from my car! Holy f You ran over me! F f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f f
After this altercation, Daniel posts a video of himself freaking out about the altercation in his motel room, where he films himself ramming his head into the walls and doors, along with kicking holes in the drywall. Bob, Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over. Bob just ran me over. Bob just ran me over with his car. My foot hurts. Bob just ran me over with his car. Bob just ran me over with his car. Look. Daniel then posted a 14 minute long live stream where he talks to the police after the incident. Okay. At that point, then I keep telling him, okay, I'm getting out of the car. Just relax, you know, I'm trying, I'm trying to get out of the car the entire flipping time. By the time I get out of the car, I turn around to get my phone, which was in between the seat. By the time I get the phone and my body's half in, half out. He starts basically gas flooring the gas pedal and my feet come off the ground as he starts driving. And I freaked out and went into the motel room saying he ran me over, he ran me over, he ran me over um, because his tire, his back tire ran over my left foot. I just got it checked by paramedics. And, um, but they said that it was just like possibly the side of the tire, not the full thing. But I felt the tire go over. And I ran into the motel freaking out and um, kicked a few holes in the wall, um, freaking out because of the entire thing. Because he's a family member, I care about him so much. Um, he's not like a relative to me, but I've known him as a dad figure, so I consider him family, and he considers me family. Daniel then streams for several hours across six different additional live streams of him, waiting for police to come back and charge him for the damage done to his motel room. The police earlier said that the motel room is a different case, or it, basically if the motel calls and wants to do anything, they can but as far as the situation with Bob and me earlier, that was a different call. They would basically have to be two different calls, I guess, and two different, basically the motel room would have to do something uh, to be able for it to be um, at the motel. I don't even know, it's, it's complicated. During this event, several people show up at the motel to gawk at Daniel, Several people called the Motel 6 and the adjacent Denny's to warn them about Daniel, including at least one person who claims Daniel has a gun and is planning to use it against employees of both businesses. Daniel attempts to take refuge in the Denny's and is immediately kicked out. Daniel then receives many spoofed calls, alleging to be from contacts such as the FBI, another Motel 6, and Bob. Daniel ends the eventful day off with a conversation with the police getting trespassed and talking about what happened during the day. So, from what I understand is, you're not inciting any of this stuff. Um, the staff at Denny's is concerned that you're making statements that you're going to hurt them, stab them, harass them. That um, is not true. Things like that. That's okay. not true. Okay. Are you Are you aware you have an attempt to locate out of Denver for homicidal statements? I did not know that. I was not told by the investigator with okay. the Secret Service. I can call 
and verify and I can go in person tomorrow and talk with them. Um, is it is it like a warrant? No, or? it's a technical payment. So, we, so please, please contact you. What we need to do is evaluate your mental health. Do you, where do you live right now? I am currently homeless. Okay. Do you have a place you, you stay at night? Um, not really when I'm homeless. Sure. Um, but I know my way around all of Denver. After he drove off, I should say, I went into the motel freaking out, into the motel room, and I, because I've never had a family member so close to me right. freak out like that. Sure. So I freaked out, and the entire situation went to berserk. <laughs> and I've been waiting now for almost two hours, being told the police are on their way, just wait. And it started creating a scene over there, and I was like, this is not good. So I started calling in myself to 911, take advantage of my popularity, and it needs to be the other way around. It needs to be, don't mess with me, because it's not okay. Daniel starts this arc by claiming that his travel ban has been lifted and that a new chapter in his life is beginning. Daniel the next day posts two angry community tab posts that were then quickly deleted. Daniel shortly then posted a video about his trench foot claiming that it would never heal and claiming that Bob Proctor was the reason for this. Fast forwarding to September 9th, Daniel threatens to unalive himself while talking to Tina Vanderwall who is most likely a troll. Daniel then goes on and posts a picture of a random guy walking claiming that he was spotted. Again, just another schizo post. And Daniel would continue to schizo post, now claiming he was harassed, then threatened to unalive Bob Proctor if he found out that Grace Vanderwall was cheating on him, and he claimed that he works for Uber Eats, before quickly posting a video saying he got fired because of trolls. Now getting to the more relevant stuff. On September 10th, Daniel claimed that he would be enrolling in college specifically University of Colorado Boulder. Days after this claim, Daniel wrote several community posts regarding his enrollment process, as well as a live stream, during which he pondered which subject he would be majoring in. Daniel claimed to have officially enrolled in CU Boulder, but in actuality he was just wondering the campus live streaming and attending parties. Phi Kappa Tau, a fraternity of CU Boulder, had become friends with Daniel. This quote-unquote friendship served to fuel his delusions that he was a student at the college. Daniel's various interactions with them at frat parties would begin to be posted to his TikTok and YouTube channel. Hi, this is Daniel Larson, and you guys should buy Capita. On September 13th, Daniel was filmed at Taco Junkie Tequila Bar with members of Phi Kappa Tau. In one video, Daniel was recorded kissing an unknown woman's cheek. I have no clue why this woman would let this happen considering that Daniel has most likely not showered in months and also commonly has scabies. Now on September 14th, several videos were posted to the Daniel Larson subreddit of Daniel's short time on campus, with the videos varying widely. Okay, that is Flex Burger. Flex Burger has been caught officially. He was, he was giving us a f- This is a Maya swag classic. Right, and I'm Grace Vanderbilt's sister, right? Right. Yeah. I'm like, a, I'm just, I'm like a young Elon Musk. Peace for all. Yeah. 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 yeah, you can yeah, go in there. Just don't like sit down. <laughs> yeah, I, I got, I got rabies. Oh. <laughs> like Shelton was a poor. I never seen it. <laughs> People are being actually like dangerous. Okay, so if people are being dangerous, you can say the N word. If if I need to for safety to scare them like, off. Like a, like, <laughs> a, like, a, like a tactical slur. Wait. Your name is Nick. Last name. Put it together. Nick. Oh. 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 That is so. Why would you do that? I was exposing him. 
Okay, now you gotta get up there. There we go. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, there we go. Yeah, keep your eye on the ball. Don't think, just do. There we go. Look at this. That's the word. Thank you, coach. You got it? Good job, Daniel. Good job, Daniel. This relatively positive couple of days regardless if they were mocking him or not, would shortly end on September 16th, when Daniel Larson would be arrested for third-degree assault. Daniel was at Folsom Fields, and, and in an attempt to meet Deion Sanders on stage, he was stopped by security, to which Daniel did not respond well to. That was when he allegedly struck the security guard, causing the police to be called where Daniel Larson was arrested. Bro, it's Daniel Larson? Holy sh Daniel Larson. <laughs> no fucking way. Take out his ass. Holy sh Oh my god. They're fucking taking him down. I'm gonna expel someone named Warren from the WebEx, excuse Mr. Sasa for disrupting court, and expel him from court as well. Mr. Rosenbach, have you had a chance to talk to Mr. Larson yet? Okay, he has an audience that is uh, chiming in on WebEx, so I'm gonna ask if you could have a chance to talk to him so we can uh, get things moving along. Okay, you all done, Mr. Larson? Okay. We'll call Mr. Larson's case and then we'll call, is it the Kyle matter? Call the Kyle matter. Yes, Mr. Larson. Mr. Larson, come on up. Mr. Larson, your case is 23M1704, People versus Daniel Larson and Mr. Larson, you're present. Out of custody and on bond, Mr. Rosenbach is here for the people. I know you, Mr. Rosenbach, have been talking and I saw some paperwork being exchanged. Mr. Rosenbach, um, what do you have to report? Either pleaded guilty to the added count three of attempted assault, okay, or an amended count one or two. We'll do added count three. Um, so added count three of attempted assault um, to serve twelve months um, of probation to do anger management evaluation and treatment, forty-eight hours of useful public service. My approach. Yes. And that's a class two misdemeanor. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Mr. Larson, did you hear all that? I did, Your Honor. And is that how you want to resolve your case today? Is you'll plead guilty to an added count um, uh, of count three of attempted third degree assault. It's a class two misdemeanor. I'd place you on 12 months of probation, order 12 hours, uh, 48 hours of community service, anger management uh, classes and a fine, do you understand that? I understand that. Okay, was anything promised to you for, ex, other than from what I stated out here in open court just now? No, your honor. Are you thinking clearly today? Yes. Are you under the influence of any drugs, alcohol, or medication that would affect your ability to understand what's going on right now? No, your honor. And I've also, Mr. Larson, been handed this Rule 11 advisement form. This is a form that details the constitutional trial rights that you give up by pleading guilty. Uh, did you read through this form? I did. And do you understand this? Yes. Okay. I'm going to briefly go over your constitutional trial rights with you. I want to make sure you understand you don't have to plead guilty just because you've been made an offer. You have a right to a speedy and a public jury trial. Now, if you go to that speedy and public jury trial, you'd have a right to, uh, you'd be uh, presumed innocent throughout the entire proceedings. And the only way you could be found guilty is if the district attorney was able to prove to the jury's satisfaction beyond a reasonable doubt your guilt. Now, at that trial, you'd have a right to an attorney. If you couldn't afford an attorney, I would appoint one to represent you. Your attorney would be able to cross-examine and challenge all the DA's witnesses, would be able to subpoena witnesses to court, even if they did not want to come to court, and then you could testify in your own defense. Now, Mr. Larson, if you chose not to testify, if you decided to remain silent, I would instruct the jury. They couldn't hold that decision not to testify, that right to silence against you. Do you understand that? I understand. 
if you went to trial and lost, you'd have a right to an appeal. When you plead guilty like you're doing right now, you waive or give up those constitutional trial rights. You understand? I understand. Do you have any questions for me about your constitutional trial rights? No, Your Honor. Is anybody threatening you, pressuring you, or coercing you to get you to waive your constitutional trial rights and plead guilty? No, Your Honor. You are pleading guilty to attempted third degree assault. Attempt is a violation of 18-2-101 of the Colorado Revised Statutes. Third degree assault is a violation of 18-3-204 of the Colorado Revised Statutes. A class two misdemeanor is carries a maximum penalty of 120 days in jail and a $750 fine. Do you understand that? I understand. Do you have any questions for me about your constitutional rights, the charge you're pleading guilty to, or the maximum penalty here? No, Your Honor. Mr. Larson, to the charge of attempted third degree assault, a class two misdemeanor, how do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty. I will accept your guilty plea and looking at your demeanor here in court, Mr. Larson, and your responsiveness to my questions, I am going to find that your guilty plea is knowing, voluntary, and intelligent, that it is free from threat and coercion, and that you understand the maximum penalties and the elements of this charge. I will dismiss permanently counts one and two, enter a conviction only on the added count three, and regarding sentencing in a factual basis, uh, and I am familiar with the facts of this case, Mr. Rosenbach, that took place at Folsom Field, um, what do you want to tell me? I don't have too much to add. Okay. Simply that I think this is a reasonable disposition. Uh, um, and I just want to make clear, I did say, I don't know if there is restitution to be reserved, but I did reserve restitution. Okay, I see that. Thank you. I will find there's a factual basis for the plea. Uh, now, Mr. Larson, you don't have to say anything to me, but this is your formal sentencing hearing. Is there anything you want to tell me? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Go ahead. Go ahead. During the um, day of the um, situation, uh -huh. My, I didn't want to hurt anyone or um, cause any major issues. I was supposed to um, be at the event and I um, was told by security that I had to leave and I was supposed to be working hands on at the event but i was never given the um vip pass to get through first okay and so um there was like a complete miscommunication and i panicked mm -hmm. and i when the security card came up to me and told me to leave and i refused trying to explain mm -hmm. the security guard tried to put hands on me to okay. remove me and that is when i put my hands up and he took that as assault. And um, that's what led to my arrest. Okay. Um, in the future, Mr. Larson, even if someone has a misunderstanding or you have an expectation of what's supposed to happen, you're not allowed to put your hands on people. I understand, Your Honor. All right. Well, hopefully you'll get something out of this probation. Um, but for the next 12 months, um, you have that 120 days of jail hanging over your head. Uh, I will order 48 hours of community service, no weapons. Uh, the mandatory protection order continues. Uh, anger, I will order an anger management evaluation and any treatment that they recommend. And I'm going to continue with the uh, condition of stay away from Folsom Field. It'll take a few minutes and we'll give you information on uh, that probation, where to check in with probation and the clerk. Do you have any other questions for me? I do. Okay, go ahead. Um, since Folsom Field is a part of the CU University campus, mm -hmm. do I have to stay away from the entire campus or could I just Folsom, Field. Just Folsom Field? So if I wanted to, I can reapply for college? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. All right, good luck to you. To wrap this video up, I want to say that part 5 will be coming very soon. I was not expecting another part, but with how much goes on in Daniel's life, packing it all in one video would have made it super messy. 
So stay tuned for part 5 where we will officially be up to date in the Daniel Larson story. Again, big thanks to the Daniel Larson subreddit along with the Daniel Larson wiki. Seriously, I don't think making videos on Daniel would be possible without their resources. I also want to thank all the creators who inspired this series. They will all be listed in the description, but a special shout out to Kusari for giving me good advice and also being a creator who inspired me to make this series. He also makes great Daniel Larson documentaries and I highly recommend you check him out. Again, thank you guys for the support. I love you. Stay safe. And as always, thanks for watching.